Recognition from your peers for demonstrating professionalism across our industry. From the National Business Aviation Association, this is Flight Plan, brought to you by Varion. I'm Rob Finfrock with your trusted source for the very latest business aviation news and information. Established in 2015, the NBAA Dr. Tony Kern Professionalism in Aviation Award recognizes individuals who have demonstrated their outstanding professionalism and leadership, all in support of business aviation safety. The criteria for this peer-nominated award are structured around Dr. Kern's integrated model of professionalism, a set of tenets for gauging professional attitudes and behavior. Those are vocational excellence, professional ethics, continuous improvement, professional engagement, professional image, and selflessness. Recipients of the Kern Award are often surprised to find out they were even nominated. And as 2023 recipient Wendy Langen, Executive Director at Mente LLC, tells us, it makes you think about which of those attributes stand out most to your colleagues. I did do some reflecting on this and some feedback on why I was nominated. One of the areas was selflessness, which seems odd to think of yourself in that way or, or tout that that's an, something that you're good at. But as I, as I really uh, thought through it and looking at Dr. Kern's outline of what that tenant means or what the outcomes are, I do think that just keeping focused on what is right or trying to get to solutions, just that mindset results in the selflessness qualities that Dr. Kern outlines. Also joining me today is Max Grover, CAM and a captain at Liberty Mutual Insurance. In addition to receiving the Kern Award, Max is also one of NBAA's top 40 under 40 in 2023. As much as I'd like to say I was recognized for selflessness, I'd have to say I was probably recognized for professional engagement. Now, with that said, I think selflessness is the tenet that myself and most professional pilots out there should display in a day-to-day basis. You know, at the root of our industry is the notion that a high-performing team is orders of magnitude more effective than the individual. So the collective goals set by your team are, without question, paramount. Every time I approach a trip or another project in the workplace, I'm doing so with the goal of putting those around me in the best position to succeed. And that's the best way I can give back to my operation is kind of cultivating and shepherding a team and elevating those around me. My third guest is Jim Lara, principal at Greystone Advisors. I'm responsible for the leadership of our organization. And when we're uh, working with clients, working with their leadership and uh, staff in those organizations. And we really have to embody each one of those attributes you know, thinking back on each one of those attributes in my career, they're all something that that I have tried to live by to a greater and lesser extent of success, but they're all critically important to high-performing teams that are all on the leading edge, especially the one of continuous improvement. What was great yesterday is just average today, and in our practice, we, we try and be at the leading edge of, of everything all the time. So there is a constant focus on each one of those attributes. Right, Jim. Each one is important on its own, but they all complement each other. Correct. You can't do one without the rest of them. But if there were to be one that would stand out, I think it would be professionalism. There's just no substitute for it. You have to be at the top of your game, especially in a professional aspect. We deal with lots of situations, and there's just no substitute for professionalism. There's no compromise that is possible and and still produce the results that our clients want. What I think underscores all of these attributes and where I've tried to approach everybody's work here at the team, regardless of position, is having a heart for service is going to open up not only opportunities, but conversations and ability to collaborate, you know, across organizations and across function. And that in itself allows for the continuous improvement, the professional engagement, the professionalism. If you're not capable of serving others, including the principles and what your end product is, those other tenants aren't going to come to fruition. Max? 
I want to cue in just on a little piece Wendy said there, and that's this idea of underlying principle. And I think that's important because all of these model attributes share a foundational bedrock or prerequisite. And in my mind, that's the qualities of humility and an innate sense of fallibility, which I think are two keys for any safety-oriented business aviation professional to embody. So I, I think when you look at it from that lens, you see very clearly that the markers we see in the model are all derivatives of those two underlying qualities. And together, they paint the picture of, of what a well-rounded 360-degree kind of perfected professional should be. Yeah, you know, and to be frank, I think it's something that we'll all work towards forever. We'll never probably achieve. It's that sense of continuous improvement that keeps us all going. But I think that's how they all interact in the model sense. More with our panel in a moment, including their advice on how others can display professionalism in their jobs and how they each found out they'd received the Kern Award in 2023. But first, this word from our sponsor. Take your aviation operations to new heights. Introducing Varion, formerly known as ATP, your ultimate partner in achieving maximum aircraft uptime. At Varion, we understand the challenges faced by everyone in aviation. Our industry-leading technology solutions revolutionize aircraft management, so there's no more waiting, no more wondering, and no more wasted effort. Get real-time visibility of your maintenance, inventory, operations, and regulatory data right at your fingertips with an easy-to-use system. Backed by a team of experts with deep aviation knowledge offering 24-7, 365 support. After 50 years in the business, we have built a growing reputation for getting our customers more aircraft uptime. That's why thousands of aircraft operators worldwide have already discovered the power of Varion. Say goodbye to downtime and hello to increased efficiency and profitability. Visit Varion.com to learn more. Varion, let's get you more uptime. We're back now with a few of the recipients of NBAA's 2023 Dr. Tony Kern Professionalism in Aviation Award. Wendy Langan, Jim Lara, and Max Grover. Max, continuing with the tenets of Dr. Kern's integrated model of professionalism, how do you work to display and foster them in your job as a business aviation captain? You know, every day in my job and every flight, for that matter, is an exercise in continuous improvement and particularly, you know, extensive pre-briefs and uh, debriefs following operations. It's just kind of standard operating procedure. That's the norm. That's just what we do, period. And then you can also extrapolate that to collateral duties, whether it's any safety management efforts, even just suggestions from the line of how we can make this whole ship work better. And, and again, to not to steal from, from Wendy, but she makes some great points, that service-minded attitude, you have two sets of customers, internal and external. And, and I think continuously improving on both sets is core to the mission. And then from an engagement perspective, I think we're all involved in a myriad of, of industry alphabet groups, and that could not be overstated just how important that participation is from, from those involved in the industry. Jim, what about you? How do you demonstrate these tenants in your company's work with flight departments? One of the things that we do a, a lot of is modeling, modeling behavior, modeling different techniques. We do an awful lot of teaching. The modeling is a very, very important aspect of our services. But we learn a lot from each other, from the folks that are in the organization. And we're all continuously learning from one another. Every day for us is a new day. Every challenge is a new challenge. And so that, that modeling and uh, sharing of experiences goes along with, of course, con the continuous improvement and the, and the quest for professionalism. We call it a quest for excellence. And we see a lot of that in the industry, and we certainly would look for a lot more of it in days to come. But that quest for excellence is so incredibly important. Wendy, we started off this conversation by noting the importance of selflessness in the pursuit of professionalism. How do you demonstrate that selflessness in your job, and how does that then carry into the other tenets of the integrated model of professionalism? I myself am an, am an introvert, and so I, I, I don't find it natural for me to go to big conferences or engage in large ways or network extensively. Even being on this podcast is a, is a stretch for me. But I've made it a mission, especially when we're looking at our operating plans, 
to find ways and resources so that there is the opportunity for everybody to engage professionally in ways that they're comfortable and where they can be most effective. And I, I think going back to even, you know, Jim spent time in our department a while back. And one of the discussions we had and that I've, I've tried to continue to resource and engage with everybody here is not only just discovering and nurturing everybody's certain passion and where they want to put their energy, but allowing them to professionally engage in a level that's right for them. Not everybody is comfortable with being out front, but that doesn't mean their contributions are any less valuable. So how can you bring them along, maybe in a quiet way, but they're, they're contributing in the fundamental aspects of how we're successful each and every day. For those who aspire to be true safety-oriented business aviation professionals, Wendy, what is the most important thing they can do to start down that path? This is getting into some soft skills here, but approaching everything from a a perspective of being curious, that's going to allow for learning and it'll de-escalate any uh, operational tensions and allows everybody in the room to open up and collaborate and everything that you can soak in from other functions, just being curious is going to allow for that paradigm. And then keeping top of mind the most positive interpretation of anyone's actions or operational scenario when addressing a situation. Assumptions are the killer of learning and collaboration. So even if you come to a job with a a myriad of skill sets and you've been a professional for years, always being willing and open to learning is going to not only open up opportunities for you personally, but is going to encourage the department to focus in places where, to what Max had alluded to earlier, a culture of safety and knowing where you may be fallible and working together to improve there. I think Wendy, again, had made an excellent point uh, with intellectual curiosity. I I think that's 100% a required quality to get across the finish line and actively pursuing perspectives throughout your operation. Be curious, go learn about the thoughts that all your team members have and, and, and what their viewpoints are. I, I don't think you can holistically review what you're doing unless you're actively gathering all those data points. I think those are kind of the two key drivers to tee you up then to apply the Kern model attributes in your day to day. One of the most important things that any professional, especially professionals in the safety arena, need to cultivate is trust. You're going to have people reveal things to you and you want them to be revealed honestly and completely, but in a safe environment. And the safe environment means that you must earn, not have, you must earn the trust of everybody that you work with. And that means the trust of folks that may be line oriented contributors, folks that are in a supervisory role, and folks that are in a senior executive role. When, when you earn the trust of folks in the organization, you're dealing with 100% of what they see. And that's the way that you can be a catalyst to help take that organization to an ever higher level of safety and professionalism. Rob, if I can I add to that, because I, I think Jim made a great point there that trust is paramount. And I think in earning that trust, empathy is key. And I'm drawing a lesson from Tom Hoff, who is former chairman of the NBWA Safety Committee. I heard him speak about his greatest lessons in leadership. And number one in that was to treat your team with love. And my takeaway was that meant to espouse and provide empathy and be an empath in all your dealings with those around you. And, and that is what sows the seeds of trust. And I, I think Jim was absolutely spot on there. All of you raised some great points there. Jim, what additional guidance would you give to others working in business aviation on how they can exemplify the professional ideals recognized by the Kern Award? I think that those the, the professional ideals are tenants that each of us in aviation or in business or, in fact, in life have to aspire to. When I heard that I was awarded the Kern Award, I got a phone call as my wife and I were having dinner. I was completely overwhelmed, just broke down in tears. You know, this is not something that you campaign for. It's not something that 
I didn't think that I would ever be recognized for that. But to have that recognition from your peers is simply terrific. And each one of those tenants is so important for really a professional in any field of endeavor, but especially in the business aviation safety community. But it was one of the best honors of my life. We have a kind of an unnatural challenge ahead of us and really every day. You see, we have this organization called the FAA and they have what they call minimum standards, which translates to what's the least that you can do and get by. That is the absolute opposite of what we're talking about here. We always campaign for the quest for excellence. And I think we need to have that really as a a hot button for our entire industry. I've been on this campaign for a long time, and I think we still have a long way to go. I would challenge anybody in a flight department or on a flight team to learn and be adept at articulating the complexities and challenges of any aspect in your business. If you're somebody that can intervene or advocate for others and really know or at least point to where someone from the outside can help or provide resources, not only will you gain allies across the team, but you'll be looked upon as a knowledge source, someone that people will come to for advice, and you'll find yourself organically becoming a leader. How did you find out that you'd received a Kern Award in 2023, Wendy? Actually, I was on vacation, and there was a call that came up on my cell phone. You know, in this role and in our world, we all pick up our phones at any time of day. And I had made a commitment that I was just going to let things lie. I'm just going to let it go. But someone encouraged me to make the phone call back. And I have to say that I was gobsmacked to have someone take the energy to nominate you for, for the job that you just feel that you're doing the best you can in every day. And especially after coming out of COVID and some challenges we've had in our flight department over the past three or four years. It was emotional and it was, it took me a bit of time to, to actually think through and, and talk about it because I felt one very privileged and very grateful for my team and what we mean and do for each other every day, but then to really let it settle and say, you know what, the, I am a leader in this area and we do good work. And I had to get maybe past a bit of imposter syndrome, but it's still with just so much gratefulness for the team that got me to this point. That's great. Max, what's your current award story? I guess the background is I spent some time on the NBAA safety committee. I remember the very first meeting I went to going into the room and being overwhelmed by the qualifications, the experience, and the sheer depth of knowledge in the room around me and feeling very out of my element. You know, I was surrounded by heavy hitters, to put it colloquially. So when I got the call that I was nominated and and was going to be one of the recipients, kind of echoing what Jim said, what meant the most to me was knowing that my peers on that committee were the ones who thought highly enough of me to put my hat in the ring. And it was really touching. And I, I can't tell you how meaningful that was and is, and is certainly something I will take with me from here on out. So I'm absolutely humbled. Awesome. And what tips would you have for those seeking to adopt a more professional mindset in their careers and elsewhere? Firstly, I think adopting the ethos of being oriented to make the ecosystem around you better. Very simple. Apply that in every facet of your job and your life. And I think you can't go wrong in raising the collective tide of safety. And then number two, and and I think it's something that's particularly important with the workforce development challenges we're all experiencing now, and that's developing a commitment to technical excellence. You know, it's a bit Belichickian of me now to say this, but I think the concept of do your job well is very important. And I think both of those things will lead you to naturally espousing the elements set forth in the current professionalism model. I was wondering earlier if anyone had ever used the term gobsmacked before in my time hosting Flight Plan, but I know that's the first Belichickian we've had on this podcast. Max, thanks to you, Jim, and Wendy for sharing your advice and experiences, and for your work in spreading the importance of professionalism across business aviation. 
Speaking of that mission, the 2023 list of recipients of the NBAA Dr. Tony Kern Professionalism and Aviation Award also includes Boyd Brokaw, Bruce Gullensrud, Lee Hall, Michael Kopp, Gary Melia, and Bill Scanlon. Congratulations to all of them. And check out NBAA.org for a series of features with additional thoughts and tips from all our Kern Award recipients. And if you'd like to learn more about the Kern Award, including how to nominate someone you work with for the honor in 2024, visit nbaa.org forward slash professionalism. And that's the latest from the National Business Aviation Association. Remember, you can subscribe to all Flight Plan episodes at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts, including by asking your virtual assistant or connected device. Of course, you can also download Flight Plan directly from nbaa.org. I'm Rob Finfrock. Thanks for listening, and join us next time for a new episode of Flight Plan. Sending out a 3500. Alright, we got him inside, we're slowing it back to 170.